Hi, it's Shannon again from House Improvements. Uh, today we're going to shoot a video and we're going to explain to you how to attach rigid foam insulation onto a concrete wall. Uh, in this case we're insulating a basement wall or, or re-insulating it. So in this system we're attaching styrofoam right on the wall so it's giving an insulation value as well as acting as your moisture barrier. Uh, as you can see behind me here We've then got our uh, stud work, which is two by fours framed with the blue wood. Uh, new product that's been out for a couple years now. It's moisture and uh, mold resistant, and it also has a little bit of a fire retardant as well. Um, so you have your styrofoam, your framing, and then you can see the, we still have the, the bad insulation in the stud spacings, and then the uh, vapor barrier over top of that. So that's, that's the basic idea in this type of basement uh, insulation system. Um, less expensive than spray foam, but really close in quality to the, uh, to the insulating value that you're getting spray foam. Just because we are uh, actually forming a styrofoam barrier that's isolating the concrete from the, uh, from the wood and everything inside, so you've, you've got that definite isolation. There's no convection of the cold coming through the wall, uh, or virtually none. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, the main thing I want to focus on in this video is showing you how to attach these sheets to the wall. So we're going to reposition in an area where we've got bare concrete and start. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to measure a length or a height of styrofoam. We're using two foot by eight foot sheets to do this and we're standing them up. So I'm going to measure directly off the concrete floor, up as high as I can up here, and I'm just going to cut it maybe a quarter of an inch shorter than that. Uh, the reason for that is it gives me a little play to, to move it in, get into position in case the floor is a little out of whack or anything like that. After the fact, we're going to go around and spray foam the bottom top, all, the, all that kind of stuff anyways to seal it back up. So, uh, you know, if you're a little short, or you know, not a perfect cut, it, it really doesn't matter because you're going to seal it up anyways. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure here. So I'm right down on the concrete floor. Uh, this measure is about 88 and 3 quarters. I'm going to cut it at 88 and a half. And uh, I've got the sheets sitting over here. So I've got my sheet there really easy to cut this stuff. You can use your utility knife. I'm just going to give myself a, a mark at 88 and a half. And if you've watched my drywalling videos, you will have seen me do this type of a cut before. I'm basically hooking my knife blade behind the end of my, my uh, tape measure. I'm using my finger over here as a guide on the edge of the material. So I'll get my uh, length lined up. I'm just making a little score there gives me a line to follow. If you want you can use a framing square or whatever you want to do this. Uh, you could also use uh, your skill saw if you wanted to use it to cut that. It just ends up making a little bigger mess that's all. So we've got our piece cut pretty simply. I'm just gonna test it here first. Uh, I don't know if you have noticed these sheets have kind of an interlocking shiplap type of a groove on the edges. So just make sure you're ori orientating your sheets correctly so they overlap each other. You can see this one here on the existing sheet. They overlap each other and they form a, an overlap. So you, you know, so your joint isn't just straight through there. Now after, afterwards we're going to put tuck tape on all these uh, vertical seams just as you see that I've done back here. Um, and then of course spray foam it. But first we've got to attach this to the wall. So it looks like we've got a good fit. We're sitting down on the floor. I've got a bit of space up there. And like I said before, that'll get sealed up. Um, what I'm going to use to attach this is these plastic anchors. So you need a hammer drill with the appropriate uh, masonry bit in it so that you can drill through, through the styrofoam back into the concrete and then these simply hammer in. And they're just kind of a friction fit sort of deal. And it's just to hold the, the foam back tighter to the wall. Uh, also, if you want, you can use an adhesive. If your walls are really flat, you don't have you know, too much for bumps and lumps or anything, this will work probably even without the anchors. Uh, put a few dabs on the back of the sheet, push it into the position you want, 
pull it away for about 30 seconds. It lets the, the glue itself kind of uh, start to uh, react and then press it back on and uh, chances are it'll stay there all on its own. Um, I, I'm just using the plastic anchors just to be sure that it stays stuck there, but, but this is definitely a, an option. Just be sure if you're going to use some kind of adhesive that you get one that's for foam board. A lot of other adhesives have chemicals that actually react with the foam and eat it away. So uh, you got to make sure you have the foam board uh, adhesive. Okay, so we just simply slide this sheet right over nice and tight to the, the existing one that we already have. And I'm going to uh, use the hammer drill, and in this case it's 5 16 masonry bit. And I'm going to drill a hole here to put our first anchor in. Okay, so you notice there at the end I kind of reamed it out, pulling the uh, bit in and out, and that's simply to get the dust and any extra debris that's in the hole out. These fit fairly snug, and if you don't get that cleaned out, they will break off or not drive in all the way. So just uh, push the anchor in lightly, tap it in with your hammer, just like that, just until it makes some pressure against the surface of the uh, styrofoam. So I'm going to, in this case, just do the same thing lower down. Two per sheet on these is more than enough. Uh, we've got a pretty flat wall here, so it doesn't take very much to hold it to the wall. So I'll do another one, and then I'll do three or four more sheets, and then we'll come back. I'll show you taping the joints and spray foaming around the edges. Okay, so we've got our sheets attached to the wall. Now the next step is to take some uh, tuck tape. Uh, this is the tape that builders use for many things, but mostly it was developed to do uh, house wrap on the outside of your house. But uh, we're going to seal, or sorry, tape these uh, uh, vertical joints. So we're going to start right at the top. Go right down to the bottom. Like, so if you don't get right to the bottom, or like right to the concrete, not a big deal. We're going to fill this gap behind this uh, wall plate with spray foam anyway. So, so do that on every one of your joints. Just like so. Okay, so that's that. Then we're going to take a can of spray foam and what we want to do is uh, spray foam the gap down here behind, between the uh, back side of the wall plate that I've attached already and the, the styrofoam so you can see that space there. Also you can see in the corner, I don't know if you can see it, but in the corner here where we butt into the other wall there's a bit of a space and a few spots because of the cut. I'm going to spray foam that as well and up and around and the little gap we have up here where the sheets, like I'd said before, we cut them just a hair short so we had lots of room to get them in. Um, I used this can before so I'm just going to get it opened up. And I'm using, uh, this is a, a gap and crack filler type foam expands a little with a little more pressure and, and volume. I'm simply going to start down here. So we're just filling that space up there about half full and let the foam do the rest of the work of uh, expanding and filling in the space. Remember you've got to hold these cans basically upside down as best you can for them to work properly. And I'm just filling up this crack back here. 
and this just makes it super airtight so none of that cold air is escaping and coming back around into the wall cavity. Same thing across the top. And so on. So you just keep doing that across the whole whole area, anywhere where you've got those gaps. I guess in reality, if you wanted, you could sp try to spray foam that crack, but these are usually so tight that you're going to have trouble getting it in. That's why the tape does a nice job of just sealing that, that uh, overlap area up. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is just kind of the main, the first component in, uh, in the basement insulating uh, process that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Uh, I do like this system. It's very, very efficient. Uh, as opposed to just bad insulation in the stud framing, which, uh, you know, it's all right, but this definitely is a better, does a better job. So I think that, uh, that concludes this video. And uh, you can check out all our other videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can go to our website, houseimprovements.com. And uh, we also have a forum link there on the website if you have any questions or idea, other ideas or anything like that. Uh, feel free to go in there and sign in and... Uh, ask away and I'll do my best to answer it and if I can't hopefully somebody else on the forum can. So again it's Shannon from House Improvements. Thanks for watching.